Hello and good morning. Bienvenido a todos to the end use quality and processing, procesamiento y calidad del producto final session here at the International Quinoa Research Symposium. My name is Abba Kaiser with the WSU Food Systems Program, and it is my distinct pleasure to be welcoming you to this session with Sergio Nunez de Arco, co founder and CEO of Andean Naturals. Sergio co-founded Andean Naturals in 2004 with the goal of promoting sustainable agriculture and raising farmer incomes in his native Bolivia, while giving U.S. consumers reliable access to a nutritious, gluten-free pseudo-grain, quinoa. He focuses on providing a farm-to-market bridge that reduces risk for U.S. food purveyors and raises farmer incomes. In November 2013, Time Magazine dubbed Sergio the King of Quinoa, placing him amongst the top flight chefs, food activists, and cookbook authors in the article 13 Gods of Food, People Who Influence What and How You Eat. Sergio holds a BS in Political Economy of Natural Resources from the University of California, Berkeley, and he's a wonderful host and a gracious friend. we like to welcome you. Thank you, Sergio, for being here. Thank you for the invitation to speak. Um, I'm going to go through a facility tour and then talk about different types of quinoa seeds, the processing that undergoes to get them to the best quality possible, and also touch on some um, applications for quinoa and different products that uh, we're seeing on the market. Um, so I am the product line lead for um, Arden Mills, actually the annex by Arden Mills. And um, I've been on the on the quinoa um, adventure for the past uh, 16 years now. And uh, so it's been my passion for a while and uh, I've visited a lot of processing plants. Um, actually, my first plant was even before starting um, Andean Naturals. So I founded Andean Naturals in 2004. But the very first processing plant that I visited was when I was um, on my first job at the United Nations. And this was in 1996, and I visited the first uh, processing plant then. Um, it was a United Nations uh, per, uh, project at Anapki in Bolivia. And I saw the very first uh, quinoa polishers and wash line, and they're even setting up a solar drying system. So that was uh, very exciting. And then years later, I got the chance to visit uh, many Bolivian exporters that we uh, sourced from. Um, I visited Peruvian exporters, I visited um, Ecuadorian exporters, and when I talk about exporters, it's usually the processing plant is also the exporter. So usually processors and exporters are the same, although they're in some cases exporters that subcontract, in which case um, I, mean, I would have probably seen 15 to 16 different processing plants uh, throughout South America. Um, we also built a facility in Bolivia and built um, this facility in the United States in uh, Yuba City, California. So I'm very happy to give you a quick tour. Um, I filmed this walking through and we're speeding up uh, certain areas so you don't have to see me walking and holding the camera. So this is the best we can do uh, virtually. I wish I could take you all to visit the, uh, the plant and give you a tour and explain what everything is live, but um, considering all situations, I think we're gonna have to do with uh, the tour. So let's go ahead and start with the Andean Naturals um, uh, plant. So this is the outside. We, uh, we have that beautiful quinoa stock logo, which uh, we're very proud of. So we painted it nice and big up in front. You can see it as you, as you get uh, close to the building. So this is the main uh, production building. And as you can see, it's got uh, two truck docks and another two truck docks right there. The main office is on this side. And here we're gonna go into the uh, production area. So that's actually the bag house, we call it. So that's a system that aspirates every single piece of equipment to keep the dust down. Quinoa is pretty dusty. Of course, um, it's a BRC certified facility, so you have to uh, follow good manufacturing practices, wash your hands, head covering, and at Arden Mills, uh, safety is one of our values, so we definitely um, 
make sure that everybody's got a helmet, boot protection. You, you'll, you'll notice all the protective equipment. Here's as you walk into the main plant, the pack room, we're gonna get a better view from above, but this is the, the say finished product area where you'll see uh, one pack line. This is an automated pack line. That is the semi-automated pack line, and that's the bulk pack line. So for bigger bags from super sacks, 25 pounders. And that's the lab. Now we're gonna go down the stairs and take a look at the fast pack line. So this, we call it an automated pack line where you feed the bags and the machine will take each bag, will um, spray a lot code on them so you can uh, have traceability. It will um, open the bag, blow some air uh, into it, make sure it's nice and open so it can receive the dumped quinoa that you can see right there as it dumps the right weight of quinoa. So this is 12 ounce to 16 ounces, or even up to four pounds, and then it gets packed. Um, after the bag is sealed, obviously, um, it's a, a heat seal. And um, we also, for bigger bags, so something that might not fit on the automated line, you have a semi-automated line, which is a lot more manual. And this is where we might pack odd-sized bags or something that our automated line can't uh, pick up. Um, in this case, we have um, a four and a half pound bag um, and you can see there's uh, two lines feeding the metal detector. So all lines at the end are metal detected. So that's something that you do at the very end of the process. Uh, here we're walking to the bulk line that I mentioned. So the bulk line has a magnet up, up there on top where my, my finger is there. That's a magnet grate and the product drops through a metal detector into, uh, you can have a one ton super sack or you can deviate the fall to another pack line, which will do 25 pounders or 50 pounders. Again, you have that tunnel, which is a metal detection, and the different bags are filled with some metal. So 1.5 millimeters fares, non fares, and two millimeters stainless steel would be what we put inside those bags to test that the metal detector actually works or to verify it, 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 it works. So, um, so every set amount of time we'll test um, and uh, make sure the metal detector is working. Now we're gonna go into the bulk cleaning line. Now this is where most of the work happens and you have two stages. The rough cleaning, which is this, this tower where you would bring in field cleaned quinoa and it drops down here to a little plate magnet, and then it's carried up um, uh, this tube, which is a cable conveyor. So there's little plates that push the quinoa up uh, to the top of this tower where there's a scalper sifter, and then you see a gravity table there with a destoner. Now we're gonna go up here because from here, I really like this view of the final cleaning so this is the last stage of the process where you take quinoa from 99% pure to 99.995 and higher. So the quinoa that already went through the rough cleaning and desaponification will go up this elevator to the cable conveyor, to an aspirator to take out dust, to a desoner, up this elevator to a magnetic separator, an optical sorter, which also has a resorting line. And once the quinoa has been sorted a couple times for color, shape, size, um, it'll go through an aspirator, a double screener, and then after the double screener, I'll go to the other side. The rejects are down there at the bottom. And um, this is our desaponification room. And we can't show you that because that's actually all of our proprietary technology of how we take off the saponin, which I'll describe here shortly. But um, going back a little bit, the rough cleaning. So this is a view from the first tower. The rough cleaning is really taking off the bigger stalks, twigs, and then a gravity table for lights, heavies, and a destoner. And then the saponin is taken off. 
And finally, the premium clean that you, you just saw. Of course, the, um, really the brains of the operation is uh, an uh, infrared camera equipped optical sorter with 256 scanners that have little air guns, 256 of them, that will be shooting hundreds of times per second. Um, after the product's been cleaned and packed, it goes to the finished product warehouse, where you can see it being wrapped there. So that's a retail product that's um, being wrapped prior to shipment. And I'll actually show you how it's loaded onto a truck here pretty shortly. So there's some more product, and you can see the warehouse is just huge and filled with both bulk quinoa that's ready to go and retail packed product. So we're just going to go walk all the way to the back, past the racks, to the loading bay, where the product that you just saw packed and wrapped is now being loaded onto a truck. Um, we can see uh, how it gets loaded onto a truck right here and then it's ready to go. And now we're gonna walk slowly, actually pretty fast here through, uh, you can see Colorado quinoa here. That's all clean product from um, our Colorado farmers, but there's also fair trade Bolivian quinoa, there's Peruvian quinoa, uh, there's our raw material storage that we just saw. But now we are walking up to the lab where the, um, our lab technicians are going to show, show us really quickly how um, they control the quality of the, the, the product. So this is after a rough clean. After the rough clean, you can see there's still some organic material and still some twigs that they're finding on after the rough clean. So it needs to go to the premium clean to take off those last little bits of foreign material. And of course, the second step is the desaponification. So we're gonna test that the saponin has been taken off to um, the right levels. And the way we check this is uh, through a foam uh, um, test. So you take uh, five milliliters of distilled water and you'll weigh out a certain amount of quinoa, which then gets poured into that test tube and then shaken for about um, 30 seconds and you let it rest 20 seconds. So um, Carmen is putting the, the timer on. We're gonna speed it up um, so that she, uh, that's, that was a moisture meter that we showed while she was shaking it. And uh, here we, we're gonna see how she measures out the, uh, the foam. So she um, lets it wait for about 20 seconds for the foam to settle, and then um, she will measure. So just to give you a reference, when the quinoa is raw, it'll be eight centimeters. We're not talking millimeters, and here we're talking three millimeters. So if it's below three millimeters, we know that it's below 26.6 milligrams per gram of saponin, which is acceptable. This is a quick guide on the various foreign materials that we find in quinoa. So all each one of these is a foreign seed. So we can find canola seeds, mustard seeds, uh, amaranth seeds. Um, but what um, some of the, the most common here are on the page. So this is a reference from our quality control technicians uh, where they'll collect the foreign materials that they find. And uh, you can see here hard stones. Um, you can see volcanic stones. The interesting thing about volcanic stones is they're lightly magnetic. So you can separate them on the magnetic separator. Quartz stones are the most dangerous because they look like broken glass. So we target those with an infrared camera. The sticks and twigs, the little stems of the quinoa are the most common, but these light uh, volcanic stones are very difficult because they're light, they're light colored, um, very difficult so, to remove, so magnetic separators are the best. Organic matter, of course, is um, something that we target throughout the process. Could be bug larvae, um, uh, the stones, rocks, you can remove through the um, destoners. We have redundant destoners, so it'll go through a couple of destoners to make sure that um, as it gets, hits the last one, there's no more rejects. Here you can see um, 
that's what the stalks look like, and they're very, very small, two millimeters. Um, this one I really wanted to focus on because it's uh, something that really we really struggled with, and we'll find this in Bolivian quinoa specifically, but sometimes on Peruvian. And actually, interestingly, there's some quartz in Colorado. So that summarizes the quick tour, which, if you can remember, was broken out into three parts. So when you take the quinoa, the first part is getting rid of the big foreign material. The big foreign material are those sticks and twigs. Um, I'm gonna go back to that that lab um, that lab uh, picture. So the big foreign material, the sticks and twigs, and of course any bigger stones. On the first one, that's what you're targeting. Uh, you'll also look at um, the those big seed pods, so anything large. And for that, you just need a, a, a scalper, a sifter. We'll separate any dust, but also larger foreign material. And then you, you want to separate by gravity. So you're going to take anything that's very light, including quinoa seeds that don't have um, a starch core because... Uh, Interestingly, and we see this especially in North America, ligus bugs will go in and tap into the center of the quinoa seed and suck out the starch. So you have little discs that don't have any starch in it. And we separate those with a gravity table. We also separate very small quinoa seeds as well as very small foreign seeds. We can uh, get some canola as well. And uh, the middle cut of the gravity table is usually very good. So that will keep going. And the heavy cut, which means the heavier of the, um, the foreign material, will have both quinoa, the big nice seeds, but also some stones. So we run those through a, a destoner, and once the heavy cut's clean, it goes back into the gravity table for continuing on to the process. So I mentioned um, the room where I had the... Uh, the hand, which is the desaponification. De de so on the desaponification, de de what you're really looking at is removing the saponin, which is a, um, a covering on the quinoa. Uh, I will see if I have a very nice picture of the covering here. Um, you, can, you can see a little bit of the covering of the seed right here. Um, so what we're targeting is how do you remove the bitter covering that uh, is on the quinoa seed? And this covering might be um, harder or softer depending on the variety. There might be more or less. Um, it might rub off very easily or it might be harder to rub off. And in some cases it's actually not bitter at all. So you can just, uh, just keep it with the saponin covering. So there's some uh, saponin free varieties out there that we've uh, we've worked with on most of um, the plants what they'll do is they'll take the seed they'll run it through a scarifier which is a modified rice polisher and then you'll take it to a washer where the quinoa is sloshed around about one pound of quinoa to two gallons of water so you can see a lot of water being used here and then it goes through a, a rinse step where the quinoa will um, the dirty water will rinse through and clean water will rinse the quinoa and then it goes to a dryer for about 20 minutes 190 degrees Fahrenheit so you have that dry quinoa at about 12 percent moisture target that process is intensive in heat and intensive in water um, when Andean Naturals became part of Arden Mills Arden Mills worked on a new process, which is a um, very low water process. We use a thousandth of the water that we used to use, so a thousand times less. And the process involves a very uniform friction. So the equipment um, that we had access to before was rough in the sense that it's like taking a little sandpaper and sanding the corners. So you can sand a little bit and then you need to wash to get rid of the rest, the little patches that are here and there. Uh, inevitably, you end up with a few patches that are not washed. 
Um, now with very uniform polishers, these modern polishers, you can get a very uniform, and also you can measure how much you want to get into without hitting the starch core. So I'm going to show you a picture of what happens. I don't know if you can see the quinoa germ, which is the, the plant that's wrapped around the core. So as soon as water touches the quinoa, this germ will sprout. And it's very fragile. So if you're not careful, it'll break off. Here it's intact, here it's broken off. This, when cooked, will absorb a lot of water and will actually um, become, like you see here, just open starch. And you will lose this little, um, uh, it's like the embryo of the plant. We call it the germ. So very important to be careful as far as the abrasion. And so um, the new process will then take the lightly abraded seed, add some water, but the amount of time and the uniformity of the application of water, and then um, we quickly rub off that water with a strong airflow so that um, the water doesn't have time to penetrate inside the seed. So we can use a much less water and um, achieve levels of saponin that we um, target. Um, and those are based on, on the, the testing that we both send out to third party labs or do in-house. So this gives you um, an idea of the different uh, processes for taking off the saponin. I spoke about the traditional process, which is scarification you have uh, some that are scarification followed by a, a, a light polish. Uh, the danger with that is if your quinoa has a different degree of hardness on the, on the saponin coating and you're not controlling your seed stock that you're planting with, it's very likely that you're going to have varying results on your end product. So, um, for us, when working with smallholder farmers, we need something that's flexible enough uh, to, um, to adapt to their biodiverse seeds. So we have one system going in Bolivia, and the systems that we have where there's seed uniformity and uh, um, less varieties and more controlled saponin coatings, like the ones in North America, we can use um, the low water systems. So that gives you a broad overview and um, what I'd like to do now is just go over some samples so you can all see the different types of quinoa because it's exciting to see um, Colorado, European, uh, Pacific Northwest varieties with Bolivian and, and uh, the Peruvian and the different colors. So I think um, we're going to zoom into the different samples we brought here to show you. So I wanted to show a few samples here that we brought. Um, of course, you have the traditional Bolivian white and the Peruvian white, which um, today in the market, they make up most of the market. So between the two, it's 90% of the quinoa market. You would see are either Bolivian or Peruvian. Now, um, as we mentioned, quinoa is grown elsewhere. So you, you start having uh, Canadian quinoa coming into the market. Um, the, there's excellent varieties growing in the uh, Pacific Northwest. Um, let me bring up uh, the traditional cherry vanilla, which grows really well. You can see it right there. And um, the Dutch varieties have done quite well in California. This is a saponin free variety that you have um, from the Dutch. And, uh, of course, the Colorado quinoa, which, um, as you can see, is quite similar to the origin varieties here. So that's um, the Colorado quinoa. Um, now, each one of these, the, the Bolivian and Peruvian, comes also in, in red, for example. So you'd have the Bolivian red, and you would have the Peruvian red, wh where you can see the differences in color. So um, there's no good and bad quinoa. There's the right quinoa for the right application. Um, the Bolivian's known for just an all around good side dish application, the Peruvian as well. But we've noticed the Peruvian is excellent in soups, soups, crackers, and uh, IQF applications as well. It does uh, excellent. 
The, um, the red Bolivian has higher water absorbency than the Peruvian red. So, and the red colors in general are used more in cold salads. So you have a tricolor blend, which would blend the black color of the Bolivian. So you can have the Bolivian black and the Bolivian red and white into a custom blend. Now some um, quinoa, for example, in Colorado, we have uh, a natural tricolor blend. And um, you can also see in the Pacific Northwest, uh, a very similar blend growing there. This is a, uh, a tricolor blend from um, the coast. So what I also wanted to show you is we have um, quinoa that can be crisped. This is, this is a red quinoa crisp uh, using Bolivian quinoa. So if you're looking for a bigger crisp, Usually you go for the Bolivian. Also, it's it's um we'll, as we'll see in uh, uh, the talks on on um, um, on quinoa extrusion, the Bolivian does really well. Um, you can see quinoa flour here. Uh, you can mill the white, but if you're getting better yields on a tricolor, you can also mill a tricolor, and the impact on a tricolor powder is very low as you'll notice here on this flower so depending on the application you can have a flower that looks more like a whole grain flower and um, where color is less important and you might be able to blend um, one of these natural tricolor uh, quinoas into it of course when you're puffing or popping or crisping you have some germ that is lost and this is a really interesting up and coming application for or ingredient for quinoa is a 39% protein quinoa germ powder or you can some people call it quinoa bran powder as well. Um, many will be familiar with the quinoa flakes so the toasting of the quinoa on the flakes uh, gives it a nuttier flavor a little bit less grassy flavor. Oftentimes people um, want to avoid the grassiness that uh, comes from the enzymes and higher heat will deactivate those. And finally as we get into uh, even higher value added ingredients you will see some uh, pre-gel powders. So these are uh, these pre-gel powders will be very, very fine and, um, and um, are ready to eat. They can be used in, um, in smoothies, uh, beverages, uh, and um, we are just excited to see all the research that's being carried out around quinoa. And for me, I just can't wait to see the first quinoa protein concentrates hitting the market here soon. Um, so thank you for um, just helping me um, share all this uh, with you and uh, let me know if you have any questions.